Today we're going to be diving into some simulations, specifically the RBD bullet solver and the RBD material fracture node. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at what we can do. So I'm going to drop in a geometry node and then I'm going to just drop in a box as well. I'm just going to set this to a polygon mesh. And then I'm going to make it a little bit bigger in the Y. And I also want it to sit on the ground plane here or the zero, zero origin. So I'm just going to use a match size node. I drop that in and then I can set this to justify Y as the minimum. And you can see that it sits on the origin now. And if I were to change this value, it's going to just adjust dynamically. So now we have something that we can actually go ahead and fracture. So let's drop in the RBD material fracture node. And by default, it comes with some different settings here. So let's go ahead and wire it up. And it's gonna go ahead and fracture this box that we've created for us. And by default, it's going to, if I actually take a look at it, it's gonna be set to the material type of concrete. So there's a couple different default material types that it comes with. So concrete, glass, wood, and you can do custom materials as well. So let's go ahead and just take a look at what some of these other ones look like. So let's go ahead and switch to glass. And you're gonna see that if I look here, it's got some spider webbing going on like you would see if something were to impact glass and glass were to shatter. If I look at the wood, you're gonna see that there is some wood grain kind of going on. And you can see that it would splinter if this were to be broken, like wood would actually do. So let's go ahead and set this back to concrete and take a look at some of these settings here. So every single one of these material types is gonna come with a fracture, primary fracture um, setting here. So you can do all sorts of different things with this. If you wanna add more fracture levels, you just add in, click the little plus and add in another fracture level. If I add another one, you're gonna see a lot more smaller fractures going on. See that there's a, a ton more going on there. Let's go ahead and delete those for now. You can also add more chunks if you were to go to this scatter point. Let's drop this to something like 200. And you're gonna see that there's a ton more fractures going on. So something close to what we had with two more levels of detail there. Let's go ahead and set this back down to default. And then you also have the scatter from, so you can actually scatter from attributes. We'll take a look at that in another video, but for now we're just gonna use this volume. And then the, the way that this is creating these points in this, uh, the breaking is through a uh, noise here. So this noise is going to affect what you got going on here. So if I just change the volume resolution, it kind of acts somewhat like a, like a seed almost. It's kind of weird. And then the frequency as well. Um, it's not a real good way to visualize how that's working. Uh, not that I know of anyways, but how this basically is working is it's using uh, some, it's, it's kind of like a, a Voronoi fracture going on here. So if you've ever used that, uh, that node in Houdini, then you kind of know how this is working. So if you want to take a better look at these uh, pieces, you can drop in an RB, RBD exploded view node. And if I wire that up and take a look at it, you can see all the different pieces that we got going on here. And you can adjust how they're showing up as well. Uh, a lot of settings going on there. That's basically just to visualize how your pieces are coming together and to deal with these secondary settings. So something like chipping. So this is going to break off, if I just enable this, some pieces of these bigger pieces. So like the edges, you can see that we got some real small pieces that are chipping off right there, right there. So if I put that back on, let's see that we no longer have those chips broken off. So this is gonna be good for things like concrete. Uh, concrete will generally chip off a little bit, uh, little pieces as you break it, or if you were to like shatter it. So probably wanna use that for stuff like 
that. You can also change how many chips there are by using this chipping ratio and adjust the settings um, all throughout here. I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that and then go over this detail node. So this is going to adjust the detail of these individual breaks. So if I go ahead and enable this, you're gonna see that these straight lines are gonna now be broken up and it adds some detail to the inside of each one of these pieces. So definitely wanna enable this on pretty much every simulation, um, maybe not wood so much, um, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to do it for things like concrete. So it's gonna just break up the surface here. Uh, it basically just adds a noise to the, the fracturing that's going on. You can adjust the settings here. So if I bring that way up, you're gonna see that we're gonna get some real crazy stuff going on. Obviously don't want that, but you can adjust that and get some, some slightly bigger uh, variations in our, our breaks here, which I think looks a little bit better than the default values. And then as well, you can also enable this interior detail, which is gonna add some more detail into these interior faces. So the stuff that's facing on the inside, just gonna add another level of noise to those. And you can play with the different settings here some different looks going on but you're going to want to use this for any any sort of close-up uh, stuff that you're doing any sort of farther away stuff you're probably not going to need to worry about that so much because as you enable all three of these settings the interior and edge details as well as the chipping it's going to slow down your simulation quite a bit so just be careful with that there's also the constraints in here and this is going to be your um, basically how your object is being held together. So 10,000 can be quite large um, for some things, and then other times you're gonna wanna crank that up even higher than that. It's kind of a play with it and see what you get type of thing. But in order to do that, you're gonna need to actually simulate. So let's go ahead and delete that exploded view, and then let's drop in a bullet solver. And this is actually gonna do the simulation, because if I play Right now, obviously nothing's gonna happen because it's not actually uh, sol or, yeah, solving anything. It's not simulating anything. So let's go ahead, we can wire that up. And these three outputs, you can wire up into the three outputs that we got here. So you can see the proxy geometry, the constraint geometry, as well as the geometry input. So if you have any sort of constraints going on, so this glue that you got going on in this tab, you're going to need this to be wired up into the solver in order for it to do anything. So let's just cut that for now and I'll show you what I mean. You can wire up that third input as well. So right now, if I were to press play, it's just gonna fall straight down if I actually enable this. So it's just gonna fall straight down because there's gravity going on. So obviously we're going to want it to collide with something in order for it to actually really do much. So let's go back to the bullet solver and let's go over to this ground tab right here. And then we're just gonna enable this ground plane. And so this is going to enable a ground plane that goes on infinitely in all directions and gives us something to collide with for our object here. So if I press play now, you're gonna see that it just kind of starts falling apart. And that's kind of what you're going for if you're trying to uh, simulate anything if you just want something to, to fall down uh, it's all you need to do basically is enable the ground plane and then raise it up and have it fall but obviously if it's like a building or something that you're trying to shatter uh, or break and you want it to just sit there and then explode or something like that then you're not going to want it to just immediately start falling apart like this so that's where this glue constraint comes in so if i wire this up now if i press play you're going to see that nothing actually happens. And that's because we have some glue constraints going on in our actual solver. So let's actually illustrate this a little bit more. I'm just gonna raise these nodes up and I'm actually going to transform this up in space. So let's jump back to frame one and then I'm gonna raise this up to one in the Y direction. So now if I press play, you see that it falls straight down and still nothing breaks. That's because, like I said, this glue constraint is a little finicky and 10,000 by default is quite high. So if I set this down to something like one 
And now if I press play, it's going to break all apart. So that's basically saying that there's not a lot of uh, glue constraints, so the pieces aren't holding together very well, and they are basically just going to break apart as soon as anything hits it. So let's just play with this setting a little bit and raise that up a little bit. Still falling apart pretty easy. If I set this to like 100, see it's still breaking apart pretty easy. So we'll just need to keep playing with it. Maybe 500. We'll see how well it falls apart there. So I think, yep, if you look at this now, you can see in these individual bigger pieces, they're not all completely breaking apart. So every one of these lines that you would see if I deselect our material fracture and I turn off our wire shade. Actually, I need that on. Never mind. Uh, so this is each one of these uh, lines that you see that are are crooked or not completely straight and don't match our original box uh, is basically where it's going to shatter. So if I go back here and keep an eye on this piece, and I lower, oops, if I lower our glue down to like 10. That did not work. There we go. You can see that now these pieces have all completely broken apart and we've had all of these individual pieces fall out. Whereas if I set this back to something like 500 and I play it now, these pieces stay together and don't break apart nearly as easily. So you'll use that to kind of drive how your simulation looks and how well the pieces are holding together. So let's go ahead and just jump back to the material fracture here. And I'm gonna set this, actually I'm just gonna leave that as is. And let's go up to material type so you can see what some of these other ones look like. So if I look at glass now, obviously we're getting some weird things going on here. That probably has to do with the detail settings. Yep. So if I go ahead and play this, you're gonna see that this is gonna fracture a lot more like glass if we turn down our glue constraint. Now you'll see that each one of these material types has a different level of, or a different uh, setting for their glue constraint. So let's set this down to like 10 for both of these and we'll see it's probably gonna fall apart a lot better now. So it shatters a lot more like glass as you would expect. It's got some nice sharp pieces, some small pieces, as well as some big pieces like you would see if glass were to actually shatter. So that's looking good. If I were to go over to this wood setting now and bring this back, see we got our grains going on. So we're gonna expect this to break and splinter. And let's see, if we look at our constraints. Let's drop this down again, like I said before. And let's go ahead and play this and see what it does. So it's taken a little bit of time to sim. Like I said, some of these are a little bit more intensive than others, but you can see we have this pause now that it's splintering and breaking like you would expect wood to do if it were to get hit by something. Now, obviously wood falling just a little bit isn't gonna splinter and break like this, um, but if it were to get hit by something, you'd see it exploding and breaking like this. This is just a, a demonstration to show you kind of how these different materials are going to react by default. So that pretty much sums up what we got going on here. So just choose your material, play with the settings a little bit, make sure that you have the geometry constraints set up if you want to not just have it fall apart basically, because um, you're going you're gonna to need that in order for it to actually identify that there is any sort of uh, constraints going on and you actually I think you can see that if I drop back the exploded view and bring this in you can wire up each one of these individually I think show visualize yeah you can ooh, or not you can visualize the constraints it's not working right here um, 
not sure why that's going on, but you should be able to visualize the constraints that you got going on with uh, this exploded view. I'll have to dive into that more and figure out what's going on there, but you should be able to do that. But that's just a quick rundown of how to use the RBD material fracture and the RBD bullet solver. We are gonna jump into some other stuff like controlling how this is actually going to shatter as well as how to actually have stuff collide with it and break some pieces off or have something like an explosion happen. But we're gonna do that in a separate video, so keep an eye out for that. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys check out any sort of uh, other content on my channel that you may be interested in. I do have a lot of stuff on Houdini as well as some stuff on Cinema 4D as well. But uh, Houdini is definitely where I'm heading with this channel as it's extremely powerful. I'm looking to do some more stuff with rendering and some different renders as well because I don't feel like there's a lot of good content on uh, on YouTube on how to use the different renders and just do rendering in general with Houdini because I don't feel like most people use Houdini as their main package, but it's definitely capable and definitely something to uh, dive more into if you're just getting into it. But if you're interested in some of the other stuff, make sure you guys subscribe and keep an eye out for that. But thank you guys for watching and have a good day.